So one of the first main issues I came across when designing a robotic arm is what actuator should I use? Um, so over on the table, I have five different actuators. Um, there's different kinds over here. And I'm just going to go through how I chose um, the actuator that I chose. Um, so over here, one of the first main things that um, I wanted in, in the motor was it has to be low cost. So all of these are very low cost. Um, on the left side, these two are DC motors. And then the center one is called a servo motor, which is essentially a DC motor with some extra capabilities. And then on the right, we have stepper motors. So let's first take a look at um, the, the DC motors. So um, this one, it's a, actually it's a gear DC motor. So uh, on one end, uh, there's a DC motor and then there's some gears to make it run a little slower because DC motors tend to rotate really, really fast. Uh, in fact, this one is also geared. Um, so actually, it would be easier if I show you running these. Um, they're really, really simple. That's one of the advantages. They just take DC current, uh, hence they're just called DC motors. Um, so I have a lab bench power supply. Let me power this thing really quick and show you guys. So over here we have our lab bench power supply and I'm just going to turn on 6 volts. Um, now I don't know the exact voltage that this particular DC motor takes, but uh, 6 volts sounds pretty safe and DC motors generally have a very wide range that they accept. Um, at least I know for this it is the case. Um, so let's connect the leads and you should be able to see it spinning over there. See? So, as I said, DC motors are very simple to work with. That's one of their advantages. But the disadvantage is it's very hard to control speed and acceleration. Um, that's just uh, how they're designed and how they're made. It's very, very hard to get um, very steady speed or the ramp um, going up. It's very hard to control. And then this one, this DC motor, um, as you can see, there's still these two power um, ground and power cable uh, lines, but they also have other wires, and those are um, speed controllers, so it makes it a little bit easier to control the speed. But still, for a robotic arm, we want really, really high precision, um, and something like this, even with some speed control, it's going to be very hard to achieve the, the level of precision that we need. So. These DC motors are unfortunately not going to work. So next up we have the servo motor. Now the servo motor, uh, usually they're actually a little bigger than this. This is a rel relatively smaller package, but um, they all do the same thing um, or very similar. So inside there's a DC motor and there's another little device that tells you its position. So for this one, and generally all the cheap, cheaper servo motor, there's a little potentiometer, which is just like uh, a knob, and this thing, this knob can spin. Um, and based on its angle, um, it'll, it'll know exactly where it's at. Um, but the downside to that is that little knob can only spin a certain amount. So for these cheap ones, they only spin 180 degrees. So they go from here, and then all the way spin up to there and it stops. It, it can't go any further. So that's a very big limit and for a robotic arm, um, I want to, it to be tra able to travel more than 180 degrees, at least 360 degrees. It, even though it's not fully continuously rotating, um, I at least want to be able to traverse the entire 2D plane. Now another issue with this is um, that it's not that precise. Like, yes, it knows where it's at, and it can reach all the positions very easily. And I'll, dem I'll demonstrate that in a second. Um, there's still, it's like plus or minus a degree or two, or even a few more um, for this, something like this cheap. I'm sure you won't be able to get within a degree of accuracy. And for something that I want to be precise, that's not good enough. The good thing is that the servo motors actually generate quite a bit of torque. Um, so that that's one of the upsides, but still, 
I think the disadvantages outweigh the advantages, so we're not going to be using this. So as you can probably guess, we're going to be using stepper motors for mainly for um, the robotic arm project. So probably not this small one, just because it doesn't generate, um, it has very low torque. But definitely this one, which is uh, the NEMA 17. Um, so there's a good a few advantages with stepper motors. Uh, one of the main ones is that it's able to know how much it, it's going. Um, and what I mean by that is, uh, pretend you're starting this up and this little flap thing, or, or the just the rod, it's at zero degrees. Now I can tell it from um, a microcontroller to go nine degrees, uh, and it'll know exactly that it that it turns nine degrees clockwise in in this case, and it's able to do that particular action in with a very high degree of precision. Now the problem with that is that it actually doesn't know where it starts. So it can start over here when you start it up and it'll go 90 degrees and it'll end up over there. But um, if we need to know how much um, it's exactly at, we're gonna need some other devices to help us out and this motor by itself won't be enough. So that's definitely a, a problem that we're gonna be looking into in, in some future videos, probably just one, um, to figure out where exactly it's at um, it's a it's called a homing process, and generally people do it with a Hall effect sensor or a uh, a little button that you can um, it'll rotate and hit it, and you can set a distance or set its uh, position, I should say. And so that shouldn't be too hard. But um, another I would say a disadvantage is that the torque is rather low, especially when you compare it to similar size servo motors. Um, the the torque on this is 26 newton centimeters, um, which is actually quite low. If you convert that to newton meters, that's 0 0.26 uh, newton meters. So if you think about it, that's like having a, a meter stick, and uh, a kilogram is 9.81 newtons. Um, but and you're only able to lift up um, 0 0.26 newtons from a meter's distance. That's very, that's rather weak. So what we're gonna be doing is making a gearbox for this um, and having a really high gear reduction so we can uh, multiply this value by whatever the gear ratio is to get a much higher torque. Another bad thing I should say that is that they're a little harder to work with. As you can tell, there's a few wires coming out of them and they're wired up in pairs and um, you have to be able to to power them up on and off in a certain sequence. And that sequence is usually done with a driver. So for this little guy, um, this little driver was um, came, with, came with it. And uh, you can control, you, there's some pins that you can do, and then you have to connect the motor into this driver. Now for the NEMA 17, which we'll be using, um, we're gonna use this driver, and this driver is called the A4988. Uh, I believe that's what it's called. Um, but it's a pretty good driver, and we'll be using this in future videos. And actually, next video, we're going to talk about one of the problems with um, using a driver like this, uh, and it has to do with angular acceleration. Because when I want this to turn, I don't want like a really sharp transition between stop and start. I want to have some smooth transitions when removing the joints. And for that, we're gonna need constant angular acceleration, which is actually a little harder to achieve than I thought with um, a driver like that. So we'll definitely explore that in the next video. I mentioned earlier that I would go through um, and show you how to power this thing up and there's a ton of tutorials online on how you can get a servo running so I'm not going to show you too much of that but I'll just show you it working. Um, so here's the servo, I'm connecting it to an Arduino uh, which is the my controller and uh, I'm just going to run a really simple code that actually is built in to, in the examples and uh, you can see hmm. Maybe I didn't, there we go. 
um, and you can t see how that that little place thing spins. That's called a servo horn, um, and it's able to know its exact position um, at any point in this cycle. And how that works is uh, really basic. Uh, it's just a, a little signal that goes up and down and up and down. Uh, oh, that's a terrible sketch, but basically uh, that should all be at one level and that's at another level. This is generally 5 volts and this is 0 volts. And based on this width of each pulse, um, it, can, it can tell the servo motor which angle it, it wants. Um, so if you send a very, very short pulse, it'll go out all the way to one end, and if you send a very long pulse, um, it'll go on to the other end. And um, all of this is pretty well defined, so, um, and there's certain libraries, people, other people have written a lot of code for this, so you don't have to do too much. So I show you the uh, DC motor working, and as well as the servo motor, so I might as well show you the stepper motor. And um, over here is the circuit. As you can see, it's a lot more complicated than the other two, um, which is definitely a disadvantage. But uh, this little servo mo stepper motor driver handles most of the work. So this is actually a lot less complicated than uh, it would have been without it. Um, so basically what this stepper motor driver does, and some of them work differently. So f this is for my particular model, which is, as I mentioned, the A uh, 4988. Uh, so for this one, um, I have to send it pulses. Um, it can be, doesn't need to be uh, the same location, um, but what this stepper motor driver does is it detects these rising edges. And every time it there's a rising edge, it'll step the mot uh, stepper motor by one single step. So think of a single step as just uh, a, a tick on a clock. And um, that, that um, amount, the angle, is predefined. For my stepper motor, it's 1.8 degrees, which is a very common number. Um, but there's actually ways that you can... Um, so I made it a little bit more messier than it had to be. And the way I did it, actually, you can divide this number by 4. So each step is actually uh, 1 fourth of 1.8 degrees. So um, let me quickly um, show you it working. So I'll run the code and it should hopefully work here. Give it a second. Huh, it's not working. Oh, right, power supply. Um, so with the other ones, we didn't really need a power supply but with a stepper motor, um, the power from the USB jack is definitely not enough. So let's turn that on. And there, now you can see it work. Um, so that spins, um, I told it to spin four rotations in one direction and two rotations in the other. So it does exactly that. And the level of precision is very, very good. Um, especially after we add a gearbox in with a gear reduction, we can get it even more precise. So this is exactly what we want. Yeah, but um, other than that, that's everything about motor selection for this video. Um, next video, we'll take a look at um, how to make this accelerate. As you can see right now, it's stopping and starting, and that type of movement isn't too nice. It's not pretty, and we want to, to feel smoother. So we're gonna add some uh, linear acceleration. Um, in the next video. So I'll see you then.